Hey everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren and today we are going to dive in to three essential tools that you need for furniture flipping. Whether you're a beginner or you've done it for several, several years, you know that you for sure need these three tools. Each of the three essential tools, I'm gonna to give you a couple of different options. Like I said at the beginning, I'm gonna be talking about beginner tools, and then I'm gonna be talking about tools that if you wanna sort of start upgrading your arsenal of tools, then those would be my suggestions. My first suggestion that you definitely need to have for furniture flipping is right here in my hand and it is a screwdriver. Now you are going to need a Phillips head sometimes, but sometimes you're going to need a flat head. This particular screwdriver does both. So it's got a tip that's Phillips now, but if I pop that out and turn it over, I have myself a flat head. Now all screwdrivers aren't like that, but typically they'll come in sets of at least two different screwdrivers so that you've got both types. You might wanna invest an entire set, but really truly all you need is one of each to get you started. You are gonna be using these screwdrivers for a multitude of things, but the couple of most important things that I personally have found use with a screwdriver include removing hardware, removing hinges so that you can clean your piece and then paint your piece. And then of course, after that is all finished, you'll need your screwdriver to go ahead and reattach that hardware and those hinges. Now, one way that might be a little bit more efficient and a little bit faster is to use a drill. There are so, so many different brands of drills and so many different brands of tools in general. Two of the go-to brands for myself include DeWalt, which is what I started on, and then now I'm kind of switching over toward Ryobi. So either one of those are great options among so many others, like I mentioned. A lot of the times the drills are going to be powered by battery packs. In particular, this one is powered by a 20 volt. The Ryobi ones are typically powered by an 18 volt. And what's awesome is once you start building up that arsenal of tools, a lot of the times these batteries work with several different tools. So instead of investing in so many batteries, you can just focus on your tools. But one other thing I love about the battery packs is that you aren't limited to where your cord can reach. I could take this anywhere and everywhere and I can still be able to remove my hardware and then reinstall it again at the end. Some other ways that you might use a drill or even a screwdriver are things like adding wood bases later on. A lot of the times I will actually switch this bit out and I won't need it for screwing in screws, but I'll put an actual drill bit in there to, to create the pilot holes so that when I'm ready to then put the drill or the screw into the bottom, I will have my drill ready. So it kind of serves as a dual purpose there when, when you've got the drill as opposed to just the screwdriver. All right, time for tool number two in our essential toolkit for furniture flipping. And that is the orbital sander. I'm gonna go over a couple of different options when it comes to a sander and why you might need one. This is actually the sander that I first started out with when I first started furniture flipping. Well, I take that back. I actually started with the one that my dad had, but I quickly upgraded to this Black & Decker Orbital Sander. They're very inexpensive. I actually just ordered mine on Amazon. So they're also very easy to get a hold of. Now, this particular Orbital Sander is just a very basic model. It's got the bag right here where it tries its hardest to suck up some of that dust, but really not a lot of dust ends up in here. Instead, it ends up in the air and all over your piece, which is, it is recommended to use a mask 
a dust mask when you are using any type of orbital sander. So this is great. All you need is the sandpaper discs that fit on these orbital sanders. They typically have anywhere from five to eight holes in there to help it kind of extract that dust. And then the reason that you need these orbital sanders or some type of sander is so that you can scuff up your piece of furniture. And what I mean by that is that a lot of furniture is very, very smooth and slick and the surface isn't going to be able to bond with anything. The paint eventually will just slide right off and not stick well. So that is why we use a sander to roughen up that surface. And I recommend using a 120 to 220 grit to do so. The next step of sanders would be considered the surf prep sanders. Now there is probably some in between sanders, but for me personally, I went straight from the Black & Decker to the surf prep for a couple of reasons. This was actually my second sander and you can tell I have gotten a lot of use out of it over the past year that I've had it. It is called a three by four electric ray sander and that is because this face right here is a three by four. Now you can tell the difference between them. This one's a lot smaller, but it really allows you to get into those corners, into any crevices. And then my favorite part, well, one of my favorite parts of the surf prep sander, the pads are interchangeable. So again, you can get, this is 120 grit, so I could use this to scuff sand, but if my piece has curves or legs that I want to sand, but I don't want to diminish the integrity of the straight edges or the curved edges, I don't want to flatten anything out or curve anything that's flat, I am going to put on my sponge abrasive. It's called a foam abrasive pad or a sponge abrasive pad. It's because it really contours to the piece of furniture that you are working on. So you'll see it's very flexible. If I was sanding my hand, it wouldn't sand it flat necessarily. It would go along with those curves of my hand. That is why I love this. And the one awesome thing that they have included on their website is a surf prep orbital sander. So this is gonna be just a step above the Black & Decker model, but the thing about the surf preps is that they are going to be able to be hooked to a vacuum dust extractor. Surf prep actually has their own mount model of a vacuum dust extractor. And by the way, all these products will be linked down below if you're interested, but you can also get any other sort of shop vac in the beginning to at least start extracting that dust to mitigate the dust that's in the air, especially like the ones from the Black & Decker. But Surf Prep has orbital pads that can fit on any orbital sander. So that is an awesome feature on their website in general. If you have just got the Black & Decker one, that is totally okay. You can go to Surf Prep and still check out their foam abrasives for their orbital sanders and those will work just as well as it does on the three by four. So that was a lot of information. All in all, you need to have a sander for mostly scuff sanding, but then I forgot to mention that you also might need the sander if you're interested in sanding back the finish on, especially on the tops of pieces, it's very common. You just go ahead and sand that all the way back. You might use like an 80 grit or even a 120 grit to slowly start sanding until you remove all that finish. And that is another reason why you might use a sander for furniture flipping. All right, we're on to number three, the final essential tool for furniture flipping of course has to be a paintbrush you guys obviously you can't paint furniture without a method of painting and my suggestion if you're starting out is to grab a paintbrush there are other ways and methods of applying paint including a roller and a sprayer but in this video I'm really going to talk about brushes when I first started out I just went to Menards 
Home Depot, Lowe's, and I grabbed a brush that I thought that I would like and that I thought was going to be great for just painting. I had no idea that there were specific types of brushes or anything like that, and that is okay. I just, I needed a place to start, so I started with these types of brushes. I really loved how they, they came and they fit right into my hand, just like this, and it was easy to brush back and forth. Now, these were running around five to seven dollars, so really not too bad, but I would find myself, when I used the primer before, that, you know, it was really clogging up my brush a lot, and I was really unsure why, but then later on, I figured out that since the primer I was using had oil, was oil-based instead of water-based, it really wasn't able to be washed out with just soap and water. So I realized that, and then I began to grab some cheaper brushes when I went to apply the primer. So another type of brush that I had used in the beginning were these types of brushes. And again, just picked them up at Menards. These ones were more like two or three dollars for a brush. So with that being said, with these being my first brushes, I was still noticing that a lot of my pieces had brush stroke marks on them and it was really textured and it just wasn't drying smooth and that was really beginning to irritate me especially once I got out of that farmhouse phase because farmhouse furniture chalk paint a lot of it started out very textured and that you wanted to see the brush strokes and things like that but I was beginning to not really want that look so the more I dove in and the more I realized that there were better things out there and the brush really does matter for the finish of your pieces, the more I found out that there were more specific types of brushes. And then I was introduced to Dixie Bell Paint Company and they have a line of great synthetic brushes. Synthetic is the material that the bristles are made of. Now I know a little bit about the Dixie Bell brushes and I know that they are all handmade. Each and every bristle is attached by hand for Dixie Bell brushes. As you can tell, these have gotten a lot of use over the years that I have had them. This one here, the Scarlet brush, is probably one of my favorite brushes. It just goes on so smooth. And if you go to the store and you feel these types of brushes, they're very dense and they're very pokey and stiff. And if you get the ones from, say, Dixie Belle, they're much softer. Even sometimes I like to go ahead and put it on my face because it feels so soft. I know that's weird, but it feels so soft. And then I was introduced to zebra paint brushes. Now zebra and Dixie Belle paint brushes are very similar, but also very different. They have so many different styles of brushes and here I've got all of these zebra style brushes. They've got the two inch stubby angled brush here and these are all gonna be synthetic brushes and again, they're used for different things. This one may, this one's the two and a half inch. So this one would be used for something, a larger project, something like a larger dresser then they've got these other brushes where if you're doing legs or spindles, the round brush is definitely something that you want to look into because it is perfect for getting into all of those crevices of the legs. And then there's a square brush that's helpful for to get into corners around drawers and things like that. The Palm Pro, very similar to the Stubby, but it just fits right into your hand, which I love these types of brushes and then you've got the two inch angled brush which is it, it holds a lot more paint than any of these other brushes so you just want to be careful with it but this is probably one of my favorite brushes to use on furniture and then 
that kind of completes the zebra line. They've also got some new brushes in which are the top coat brushes. So not only are you using the brushes for your primer and your paint, I would do a a cheaper brush for primer and then paint with these nicer zebra brushes or Dixie Belle and then move on to a top coat brush. Zebra is selling some top coat brushes now that really help you lay on that top coat and help mitigate on those streak marks from the top coat becoming cloudy or too thick in places. And then the last and final type of brush that I would recommend you have on hand are these artist brushes. I picked them up at Walmart, you guys. You can pick them up at the Dollar Tree anytime that you have little tiny areas that maybe you missed but you don't want to get out your whole brush again or this is just too big to grab into those little corners grab an artist brush if you're doing stenciling grab an artist brush that's what they're called because they're very much for finer details so again I know that was a lot of information about the brushes, but the moral of the story is that brushes matter. You do not have to pay a lot for these brushes. Each brush, the Zebra especially, are right around that $10 to $12 mark, and they can be found online. Many of the paint companies sell them and partner with them, and you're able to get discounts of 10% off, but then also, I love picking these up at my local Home Depot because they sell them right there. So I can bring them home or if I am in need of a brush, I can get it immediately. Just a quick recap over the tools that I chose for essential tools for furniture flipping, a screwdriver or a drill, mostly for removing and replacing old hardware. Tons and tons of pieces of furniture have hardware and it needs to come off in order to get a great finish. And then of course you need to put it back on. Second, a sander. Same thing with the hardware. Every single piece of furniture is going to have to be sanded in order to get that great finish in the end. So you are going to want to invest in a sander to make the time go by so much faster. Instead of hand sanding, invest yourself in a orbital sander or even a surf prep sander. And if you're really interested in not having all of that dust around you, check out the surf prep vacuum dust extractor because that truly makes a world of difference and even allows you to sand inside your house. That's awesome. And last but not least, the brushes. As you can see, mine are very well loved. It's okay if your brushes get a little bit stained, they still work. Zebra is probably my go-to brush company for furniture painting. They are all so tailored to the specific jobs and I just love how each and every one is able to do that specific job and do it well. It really matters because it gives you that smooth, smooth finish that we all are looking for with our furniture. So for those of you who have stuck around to the end, I wanna leave you with a bonus tip. My bonus tip is that although there's only three tools here, that's not to say that your tool belt will not grow over time. These are the three that I said that you need to begin. So once you begin to make some money on these furniture flips, you can start investing in some more tools. Some tools that I have really found a great use for, they include a nail gun, they include a miter saw, they include a jigsaw, and even a Craig jig. There are so many different tools out there and once you continue to build up your confidence, just know that it is okay to start here and then end here and continue to grow and grow that tool belt. It is going to allow you to really start to upscale your furniture. After all, the tools are what help us create the end product. We want to make sure that these tools are helping us do the best job that we can, therefore getting a great product and end result, as well as a great profit in the end. 
end. I hope this brought some value to you guys and we really enjoyed doing videos like this where we're able to answer some of your questions and come to the table, sit down, and really dig into the behind the scenes of furniture that really not a lot of people talk about. It's not really fun to just jump in and have no idea what in the world you're doing. So it's my job to provide you guys with some resources to do the best that you guys can when you're flipping furniture. So if you like this type of video, be sure to let me know down in the comments and let me know down in the comments what you think your most essential tool is for furniture flipping. Also down in the comments, if you want more videos like this, let me know what you want me to touch on. What topics are you guys interested in? Do you want me to talk about Facebook Marketplace a little bit more? Do you want me to talk about specific paint more, et cetera, et cetera. The board is open. The ball is in your guys' court. So let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the flip side.